All righty. I think that we're, uh, yeah, we're on Facebook and we're recording is in progress and uh, we seem to be working okay. So, hi, everybody. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, it is Monday and it is our Monday show. And I'm feeling very tired today for some reason, lightheaded. I don't know. Just, uh, I guess it's just, uh, we got, we got a lot of, a lot of pollen here. Pollen is terrible right now, but we got a ton of people waiting to come in here. And I think we probably just should bring them in. Here they come. There's Charlie Wallace and Jeff Stein, Paul Levin. Let's see here. Who else? Um, uh, 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 Charlene. Uh, we got, uh, we've got, uh, our good friend, Andrew Deutsch, Len LaFrisco, a uh, current wife, uh, Marjorie Miller, <laughs> Francine Witt, Jeff Stein's trying to get on. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, the ever popular Edward Berger. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Okay. Hello, Edward. How are you? Good, good, good. Huh? Are you doing good. okay? That's right. Yeah, just, I had to get my earphones. I'm trying to listen to it off the speaker here, and it just doesn't doesn't work that well. Here we go. Now I can hear you all. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. All right. You're all enthusiastic, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. What's uh, what's up? What's new? What's happening? What if Paula? What did you do this weekend? I have to think about it. Uh, <laughs> I I teach a class at the local university, so um, th this coming week is is um, the first week of classes. So that's kind of what I was doing. What are you teaching? Uh, I teach a humanities class. It's about world religions and the arts. Oh wow! Uh huh. Do you have? Yeah, I've been you, doing it for a while. You have to have credentials for that and everything. Uh, sort of, yeah. <laughs> sort of, yeah. What, like when I'm going to school and I'm trying to learn something from a teacher, I want to know they know what they're talking about. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, that's helpful. Always helpful. <laughs> it's humanity. She's human. What do you want? <laughs> um, what? I said it's a humanities class. You're human. What more yeah. could you need? Yeah. Yeah, right. Probably uh, human. Andrew Deutsch must be in a different place because we don't see him with all his yeah. backgrounds and everything. Yeah, I'm I'm in a place that Don Giller will call in in about 20 minutes and go. Really, I'm in I'm in Oberlin where where he went to college. <laughs> Did Giller really? go to Oberlin in? Yeah, Ohio. Oberlin, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I'm doing work out of it uh, for a company here. Oh, okay. That, oh. that actually supplies uh, Brian Neary, but he doesn't know that. <laughs> but he well, when he, if he comes on, you can tell him. Yeah, it's a small world. Yeah. Yeah. My eyes talk. are just burning. I need, I need him to come out. I got to talk to him about his order because I know you guys are so interested. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I'm. My eyes are just burning like crazy today. We have. We have the worst. We. It's like a. Do you feel it, Marjorie? The pollen. Yeah, not as much as you. Is it <laughs> high today? Yeah, it's ten <laughs> five or something like that. Yeah, That's high. which is high. Mm -hmm. You know. And so it makes you drowsy, and it does all kinds of things to you. It just throws you off completely. Mm -hmm. But then again, everything throws me off completely. Uh, yeah. Hello, Jeffrey. How are you? Well, I'll tell you that nine days ago, we had a tremendous flood in Oxford, Connecticut. Okay. Oh, and wow. that thing is still, everything is shut down. Wow. You can hardly get through one place to the other place. All the rivers went over, all the rooms and stuff, people's hmm. houses are destroyed. Hmm. Uh, the bridges don't work. Oh, what, my. Part, what part oh, of Connecticut is that? Jeff, what, what part of the state? But fuck it's Connecticut. In Oxford, Connecticut. <laughs> What, uh, north, south, east, west, where is it? Um, a little bit north, but my uh, my uh, my wife's hand. kids live in West Hartford, so uh, up that way. Uh, we're below that, that and, a, and a little bit towards more 
New York. They wow. call that a thousand year event. It uh, is. I mean, it I is. We're having one every three years now, though. <laughs> it's obviously not, a, not every every bank. thousand year event. It's an every year event right now. Yeah. yeah. You know. I'm going to invest in a company that makes sump pumps. <laughs> well, we had. I mean, I love it when people say something like, "What are the chances of that happening?" Well, yeah. Yeah. probably a hundred percent. You know, yeah. because it just happened. Well, we have but pump. That's terrible up there. So we're we're yeah. our house. Is okay. Gee, now I feel good about living in the city. <laughs> we have a flood. It's because a toilet overflowed. <laughs> we're pretty. We're pretty lucky here. Yeah. Yeah. In Manhattan. Yeah. You're you're down where, Francine? Where in Manhattan? I'm on the east side, seventy third in your seventy uh, second in York. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a little I'm a little jazzed because the next hurricane is named Francine. So oh. and, and, and I hope it's like a, like a mild one. But it's always like, you know, whenever they name them, like with the F, it's always like Felix or, you know, um, Friar Tuck or something like that. <laughs> and it's like, what about me? <laughs> so. So I hope it doesn't cause any destruction. I hope I don't cause any destruction. I don't think they've ever had an a. Have they had a uh, Hurricane Alex yet? <laughs> they, Probably. They, they, <laughs> they, had a, yeah. they had an Andrew. I I did some serious damage. That's right. You did. Oh, right. You were a badass. You were. Yeah. That yeah, was a badass they, hurricane. Yeah, hurricane Alex. Charlie, though. 2016, oh, okay. January 7th, 2016. There was a Hurricane Alex. Oh. There hey. was. Oh. Yep, first the first hurricane to occur in January since Hurricane Alice of 1954. And uh, yeah, the northeast, passed by Bermuda, turning southeast and deepening. Yeah, so it didn't look like it did any damage. Well, let's see. Well, one year it's it's males, right? The next year it's females. No, I think yeah, there was, but there was a hurricane. Me. There was a hurricane Donald that just blew up skirts. <laughs> Andrew, you're so bad. I thought we were going to get political on this show. I wasn't political. What did you? I was talking about the duck. <laughs> the duck. Just about the weather. So they alternate male and female now. They started at about. Is it is alternating male, female? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's a politically correct hurricane. Yeah. And then they have tropical storms now. They're reporting a lot out in Hawaii. They've had some. They had tropical storms that have almost hit. They haven't hit, but they almost have hit. So I want to know why they report that. <laughs> I mean, when something almost happened, like Trump almost got killed. Well, but he didn't get killed. All right. So what's the news here? You know. He got a mosquito bite on his ear. You know. Did he actually get shot? Did did you see any evidence? When you see a picture when he had that tampon on his ear, <laughs> uh, and then the next day he had a little little a little tape right here, and the next day after that, nothing. nothing. Not even a scar. Nothing. Not even a cut or a bruise. I mean, if you got hit by a bullet in your ear, don't you think maybe it'd have a nick or something? Maybe they'd be dead. throwing it up or something. Yeah. Not, if, not, if it was a, not if it was a tiny ricochet or shrapnel. And well, then it's, it's no big deal. Yeah. It, it is when you're making campaign posters. I mean, let me put it this way. Let's say yeah. you get hit by shrapnel just in the air like that during a world war, during a world war, during a war. Do you get a purple heart for that? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. Well, God, when I was in the military, I stubbed my toe during Vietnam. <laughs> you know, should I get a Purple Heart for that? I don't think so. Yeah, what the heck? Yeah. We're passing them out. You go back to the carrier. I guess they were worthless because they were making fun of them for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, so uh, otherwise, uh, uh, we did. What did we do this weekend, Marjorie? Not too much. We went to a Mexican restaurant. It was good, and that was it. Yeah, we don't do much of anything. Well, she's she her birthday is coming up on the uh, ah 
on the uh, on November third. Ooh, he remembers. We will not be around then. I don't know whether that's going to be on a Monday or not, but we're going to be. We're, we're going to be in Paris. Yeah, I'm taking oh, her. Really? Yeah, yeah. congratulations. Oh, wow. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Nice. That's a Sunday, yeah. by the way. We're leaving on a Thursday and coming back on a Monday or something like that. Yeah. You're, fl you're flying into Paris and flying home? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Good for you. Finally. Finally. Yes. Finally. Finally. Yeah. Yeah. And we got ourselves, I think, fairly acceptable hotel, didn't we? Very oh. nice. That'll right. be a nice place for you to not go anywhere. You can just sit in the hotel. Exactly. <laughs> I hear they get great TV reception in those hotels. <laughs> Strong well, internet. Like, well, I, I want to do like things like I like to go to the museums. You know, it's my. I'm going. I'm going. Doing Paris next May. We're going to do the Louvre and the Versailles and all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Marjorie <laughs> wants to go over to Versailles. I've been it's there. It's nice. Incredible. Can I walk? Incredible. Can I walk well enough to go around Versailles? Yeah, we'll take a drive. We'll take a car. We'll drive yeah. us there. The train. The train yeah, takes you right to it. There, you got to walk. Yeah. Taking a train because the trains. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's the train stations right across from there. It's pretty easy. And you'll be and you'll be in Paris when a lot of the tourists have left already, which is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 And we'll be there for her birthday. So if that's... you bump if you bump into my friend Pierre when you're there, tell him I said hi. <laughs> i will be sure to do that in fact if i can't find him i'll just ask anybody do they know where pierre lives <laughs> that's how i that's found it like, that's like west side story this guy's walking down the street yelling maria and only one girl comes to the window really <laughs> <laughs> good one <laughs> That's a Bobby Slayton joke. Do you know that? I think it. You know, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> well, there was there once was a girl named Maria. Yeah, I, no, be, I better give him credit. Sorry, Bobby. Yeah, no, but uh, he said, you know, that was a Slayton joke. Yeah, yeah, he, I think so. You see, him, Maria, and no, only one, one, one woman comes to the window. <laughs> oh, you're not that Maria. No, you're not that Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got rid of the uh, Democrats. They were, their convention is all over with. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're, uh, we're, it was, I thought it was a very, very wet. I think it was well orchestrated. It was uh, great. Great job of it for only having a month to get it together. Yeah. In fact, somebody was saying, gee, you know, maybe we should maybe have a shorter voting season like that we should yeah. nominate people until you know whenever and not do anything until the conventions are over with. that's the way it used to be sure. that's the way britain does it yeah but that's a, it's a everyone does this it. is a two a two month uh window and the government pays for it so there's not all this extra money right. and stuff yeah, but I mean, the fact is that uh, uh, yes. you know it was it it should be that way, and it's so much more comfortable. I mean, look at uh, for instance, look at her right now. Uh, forget about politics; she's got a shorter sprint than Trump has because Trump's been sprinting for like what two years now. Yeah, but yeah. that's not that's not fair, Alex. He has bone spurs. <laughs> <laughs> Got a point there. Got a point. I'm sorry. Was that brain, brain spurs? Skull. Brain or bone? Yeah. yeah. Brain yeah. spurs. Brain spurs. But, but no, but you what know, it, it, him out of the army. It, you know, she's just got she's she can do this. This is a great sprint. Three and on high heels. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what Ginger Rogers used to say. That's right. High heels and she was moving well, no, no, as she said used to say, I you know. Uh, I have a harder job. I have to dance uh, in high heels and backwards. And backwards. <laughs> but the, the the best part of the whole thing was watching the reaction from the other side, just spinning out of control and yeah. with the most ridiculous rebuttals and stupidity. It was, it was, it was, it was great. It was like yeah. watching watching the bully finally laying on the ground with someone stepping on his neck <laughs> instead of the other way around, just <laughs> responding like idiots. Well, nobody knows how to react to this. You know, in the Republican Party, Trump doesn't know how to do this. He knows how to fight a guy. He doesn't know how to fight a woman. Yeah. You know, 
So, I mean, he's already talking about not debating. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't wish bad things to happen to anyone, but sometimes I don't mind so much when it does happen. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Was it Schadenfreude? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, hello, Mandy. Hello. Hello, mm. darling. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are y'all? She's the Darla of our group. Of our group. <laughs> um, we used to be the He-Man Woman Haters Club, didn't we? She, well, she, runs, yeah. <laughs> she wants the Flory Dory. <laughs> yeah. What, what is the He-Man Women Haters Club motto? Ooh. You remember? No. It was right in all those our gang comedies. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, Women oh, are the, girls are the bunk. That's right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> those shorts were the best. Yeah. <laughs> those were amazing. Yeah. Well, you know what it was? They changed them. It was actually it was the little uh, rascals. Little yeah. rascals. Yeah, it always was. No, excuse me. It was our gang. Oh, mm -hmm. Right. And then yeah. when they put it on television, they changed them to the little rascals. And I never, I never got a good answer on why. Years ago, I bought the DVDs of every episode, including the ones that they wouldn't show when I was a kid, because they said they were too racist to show. Wow. And then I, then I watched them and was like, yeah, they, they really were. <laughs> <laughs> I can see I could see why they didn't put them out there. Mm -hmm. There's there's one where uh we, at, what's his name? Weezer's talking to his parents who are getting divorced. And then he says, Well, if you're getting divorced, is mommy gonna still love me? Yeah. And mm -hmm. and are you still gonna love Pete the dog? Yeah. And and stymie, or I think it was stymie. Are, are you still gonna love stymie? And the dad goes, Oh, that picking any kid, yeah, we like him. <laughs> Oh my god! Really? Oh my god! It's I mean, and, and they get worse. There's there's one where the, the the black kids are at the cemetery and the white kids pretend to be ghosts and freak them out and the eyeballs bulge and they're get, yeah. throwing stuff oh, at them yeah. and, and I they mean, just basically sometimes they oh, it, turned white. It, they did. Mm. They did. It was I mean, based on what we would consider to have been racist back in my day, they were racist. Yeah. So in, in today's world, we you either... consider it racist, but when I was a kid and I saw those things, I didn't know from racism. They right. were just funny. Well, they're, mm -hmm. they're they're funny, but the the level of cruelty towards the black kids in the yeah. thing was. I I don't usually get uncomfortable with stuff because it's when it's funny, whatever. I was uncomfortable watching those years ago because it was just too too far out. Mm -hmm. I was never a big. I, fan. I was I was a never a big fan of our gang. Oh no, no, no. Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, although I gotta tell you, I, oh, oh, I, I, have you gone back and watched any of the uh, uh, Amos and Andy shows on television? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were they racist at all? Those, those weren't. The, the, no. There wasn't. There wasn't a cruelty towards them because they were black. Right. And the stuff oh, that I consider so, to be racist. And was, and, and they were, think about it. Think about it. In Amos and Andy. There were lawyers. Yeah, you know, doctors. Yeah, yeah. You know, all these various people who were of 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 black um uh, uh, be, who were black and um yet all of a sudden they couldn't show them on television anymore cuz yeah. they're considered racist. Yeah, but the reason the reason my argument for why these ones are racist has nothing to do with that. It's they they separated out to be cruel to only the black kids. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's racist. Yeah, that and that's why I'm Did calling they do it that, that later on, or was that early I, on? In this, I can't tell you where it was in the sequence. It's, but but but, but they were. I, I I watched them and was like, wow, that's really just being freaking mean. It wasn't. It wasn't funny. But one that really bothers me, and you can't get a try and find a copy of it. You can't buy a copy of it. Is Song of the South. You, you want a copy? I, I know. Well, I have one. a copy too, but yeah. I'm talking about one that it's literally you walk into a store and you say, "Give me where? Where's Where's Song of the South?" Yeah, Disney stopped selling it, but there's co illegal copies on Facebook Marketplace almost every right. time I look. That's there. not the point I'm making. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that movie. No. I don't think so either. I don't yeah. either. There was nothing wrong with that movie. As a matter of fact, mm. it uh, to begin with the uh, you know. Disney wasn't very much a lover of Jews. 
Mm-hmm. You know. He hired a Jewish left winger to write that film mm-hmm. because he felt he needed that kind of emotion and feeling in it. And and it's just about a kid who becomes a, a friend with this black guy named Uncle Remus who tells him these stories and yeah. he's teaching him lessons about life because he feels separated from his parents who you know don't really treat him like their son and and it, it's it's uh, it's a beautiful picture and it never gets shown because Disney's afraid people are going to say it's racist because they you know there's the story in there of Br'er Rabbit and the Tar Baby. Yep. Yep. But the Tar Baby isn't any racist thing. People made it a racist thing later on. The Tar Baby was just simply a fake uh, tar baby made out of tar so that when they attacked it, they would get stuck on it and into it, you know. Yep. Um, but I always felt bad about that picture. And on top of that, the, the uh, James, uh, uh, what's his name? James um, Basket was his name, who played Uncle Remus, got an Academy Award that year, an mm-hmm. honorary Academy Award for his performance. And yet what that, do you mean honorary? He, they gave him an honorary, uh, they didn't give him one of the major awards, but they felt they wanted to give him an award, so they gave him an award, an honorary award. It was same Oscar, same size Oscar and everything for his achievement in playing Uncle Remus. And yet, that Oscar-winning performance, never seen, you know, not available. Mm-hmm. Oh, we saw it back when I was a kid. That's how what? I saw it. I saw it when, when I was a kid. How old? Well, I'm trying to think how old. How, how, how badly did it damage you? Oh, I ruined my life. What can I say? <laughs> You know, I mean, even, awesome. I, well, wait a minute. Even the song out of the picture won the Academy Award that yeah. year, Zippity yeah. Doodah. And then you would go to Disney World mm-hmm. and Disneyland, and they would have a ride. And the ride had all the characters, most of the characters from that movie, but no reference to that movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and it was just it's just horrible what Disney did because of of weird pressure by people going, oh, that can't we that's not any good. That's horrible. No, but tell me what's horrible about it. Uh, you know? well, yeah, I know I find I'm, Disney I shouldn't, should be. I shouldn't say it's okay. Yeah. Well, wasn't Disney anti-Semitic also? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Racist. And there yeah. were good people on both sides. Well look at the <laughs> <laughs> look at the nose! Look at the nose on the wicked on the witch's nose in uh, in uh, Snow White. I mean, come on, is that a Semitic nose or what? You know, oh, that's the way that nose is the nose that Hitler used on cartoons portraying Jews. Okay, yeah. so I mean, uh, you know, he was uh, he was Disney was the worst. <laughs> he really was. He was. Yeah. Well, I think he's not the worst. Ford is the worst. Ford, yeah. He and was that is the ultimate semite, yes. Yep. What Ford? Yeah. Henry Ford. Henry, Henry Ford. Oh, Henry Ford. Oh, I thought you meant Gerald Ford. No, <laughs> not <laughs> no, 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 I'm thinking he, what? Hard. No, Henry Ford, he in fact started a uh a, a, a newspaper. newspaper. It yeah. was an anti Semitic newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, there yeah. were articles in it about it, hating Jews and everything. By the way, here's a famous Jew hater, Mike Chisholm. Hello, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Very not true. Um, but, okay, so I got a question for you to go back. Um, so my dad, uh, there were two or three books that my dad read me, you know, five to ten pages a day every day before I went to sleep. And mm-hmm. and, and two of those books were Samuel, Samuel Clemens books. Uh, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Those he, he read me those books growing up. Right. Um, I've got a granddaughter who's coming up that I'm going to continue that tradition with, and I'm very excited about it. And I know a couple of them. Now, there's a part of me that wants very badly one of them to be Huckleberry Finn mm-hmm. because it's one of my favorite stories of all time. Yeah. It impacted me. Um, I felt, looking back, when my dad read that to me at nine, ten years old, you know, a few pages a day every day. I believe that that helped shape my the idea of of 
like learn about racism and think about uh, how ridiculous it is and all of that sort of stuff. Is that something that could only happen to, a, you know, it would have been 40 years ago. I'm 48 now. It would have been 40 years ago my dad was doing this. Um, have times changed to the point where I can't do that with my granddaughter with Huckleberry Finn? Or is it something that, 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 that could be done? Well, it's, it's a personal choice, but I absolutely would read it as it was written. And yeah. when, when, when the kid shows some discomfort with it, explain how far we've come. If, if, yeah. we, if we forget that that word existed back in those days and how it was used and how it became what it became, we're not properly educating our children. I mean, all all uh, uh, Mark Twain was doing was was showing the zeitgeist, the tempo of the times. Yep. You know, that term was used to describe black people. And by the yep. way, not horribly so. Not in no. a derogatory way. In fact, uh, when I lived in Houston, Texas, I always tell the story, and I'm going to use the term now, uh, of my program director coming up to my studio while I'm on the air, and he says, boy, there is the nicest little old nigger lady downstairs. And I never heard the word nice and that word in the same <laughs> And And yet... Uh, yet uh, you know, one person used that on the air down there, and I said, please don't use that word. And he said, I'm sorry, but that's just what I was taught to use. That was the descriptive term for someone who was black. There, he didn't mean any racism by it. He didn't mean any hatred by it. Uh, and so that that word, uh, you know, it, it really is a good example of how it isn't what the words are it's how they're used yeah. and the I, I caught the I, I caught the uncensored version of blazing saddles last night on tv and they use that word fairly liberally yeah. at the beginning and yeah. you know i don't know whether i feel uncomfortable with it or not i mean back then it was 50 it's the 50th anniversary of that movie so that's well, really people not, who were saying that, it are yeah. obviously racist but well the, what the, happened the word, was um, um, the, um richard the, pryor gave him permission to use that particular term as, yeah. as representing the the black community i guess but that um, that word was, was bad and it became yeah. weaponized mm -hmm. at the time of at the time you know of, of the you know the mid the mid late 50s early 60s yeah mm -hmm. um, is when mm -hmm. is when it really got its teeth sure. but it was still a bad word but there if you yeah. And and you know, because of that word, and they still wanted to teach in the schools. You can get Huckleberry Finn with that word oh. edited out, which is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I know somebody who teaches a course right now at the university uh, here. Um, it's the history of anti-Semitism, uh -huh. and one of the uh, he's Jewish. Uh, he shares my name. It's actually my son. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you named your son Paula. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, um sorry he, he a part of the co the course he, he brings in the producers mel brooks is the producers oh. um and, and talks about jewish humor um and uh, it, um i think it's like a kind of in the same category in, in a way as as um you know personally i wouldn't use the n-word out loud to anybody or i, I to anybody, because it makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. in, in the same way, if it comes from somebody black, it's part of their for 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 a lot of black people anyway. It's 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 different. It's okay. um, they, they own it uh, um, uh, in in yeah. a way. So you know, it's it's oh, yeah. it's black it's a, it's a complicated it, subject. Black yeah. started using that term in order to claim ownership of it. Well, mm -hmm. and, and you know, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Zlani Bruce who used that term in his act, and he said it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And when he was through doing that, he looked at the audience and said, "Does it sound so bad now?" Right. He was he was making a point. It, yeah. it was it was the use of it. But you know, in the producers, you know, talk about springtime for Hitler and all the rest of that. Um, and the students, there are not a whole lot of, of Jewish students uh, um, in Akron, at University of Akron, and uh, um, they were horrified and very uncomfortable. Um, and it was it was made into a part of the course. You know, what, you, what, well, uh, what, uh, what uh, he Mel could Brooks, do, he could do that. Mel Brooks has <laughs> said any number of times the reason he did it was because he wanted to make Hitler laughable. Exactly. So when you make somebody laughable, you defang them. He's done it in every movie he's made. I mean, virtually. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do, do you remember the the Seinfeld episode where Brian Cranston's the dentist and he converts yeah. to yes. Judaism yes. just for the jokes? Anti yeah. 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 They had their own schools. Soon they're going to have their own schools. So they do. <laughs> to this day, I'm an anti dentite. Yeah. An anti <laughs> yeah. That was another but episode. I used to teach, you know, I taught yeah. high school. I taught high school in New York City for 20 years. And I taught Huckleberry Finn back in like 2003. And when I would read parts of it in class, I wouldn't say the N word, but Jim was very, was a great guy. I mean, Jim was portrayed as a wonderful, you know, knowledgeable person. So it was a good, really, you know, um, and it's a wonderful story. So Mike, I would say, yes, it's, you know, it's fine. Okay. What, what did they replace? If, what, if your what did they replace it with? What did they replace it with? Excuse me a second, Mike. What did they replace yeah. it with in those books? Negro. Oh, the, no, no, no. The word, was, the, word was, the word was still there. No, oh. in the but new, in I, the new cleaned up version, they just removed the words. So it's just Jim. Yeah. I, really? I saw. I saw an excerpt. Oh. I've never read it, but I saw an <clears> excerpt. So instead of calling them N Jim, I, you know, I mean, this thing was written about a time in history. Right. And what you're doing is you're misrepresenting history. Have you yeah. ever have you ever read the biographies of of Twain? His closest friend through most of his life was was a black guy, mm -hmm. and he was he. There's all these photos oh, there's nothing, of him. There's nothing racist in him. No, I know, but it was he, he was not. He he was of all the people in that era who were publishing and writing. I, there's a clear argument to be made that he was the least racist author in in the world or in the United States at that time. But he wanted people to understand how how painful it was, and he included it in the books. Well, to, a lot to, of people to, to at that notice. time were unknowingly racist mm -hmm. because they just it just they lived with the times. You know, mm -hmm. hey, that was a, it's like that person said to me on the air uh, when he used the word, and I said, please don't use it. He said, I'm sorry, this was the word that I grew up with. This was the word that described black people to me. And I'm sorry if I used it. I didn't mean to offend anybody. But it is offensive. But it is offensive. No, but you, you begin to understand it, especially if you live in the South, why that term was being used. And in many cases, never in a derogatory fashion. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it reminds mm -hmm. me also of the Oscar being given to Hattie McDaniels for for, um, uh, well, for Gone no. with the Wind. And Hattie McDaniels, you know, like... Uh, uh, and the and the, the the language that she used was Scarlett O'Hara, and then she went up to 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 give a uh, to get her award, and she spoke perfect American English without any trace of any. She also, by the way, was sitting in the back of the room. Who? Yeah. They they gave her a seat in the back of the room because she was the really? first woman ever, to, yeah. black woman ever, to show up for the Oscars. Yes, wow. it wasn't like Step and Fetch had showed up every year, you know, and just because he happened to be in the Academy which he should have been allowed to do, blacks just weren't allowed into the uh, Academy Awards. So when finally she got nominated, they, there was a great bunch of questions about what are we going to do with her? And they put her in the back of the room. And, and, and how many that, people tried to get her to hang their coat? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that in and of itself is just horrible racism. Okay. Uh you know. Charlie had something really interesting on Facebook a few uh, weeks ago, right, Charlie, about the doctors, the medical school? Yeah, yeah. They, uh, that, was, that was, I was like, what, oh. what was that, Charlie? Well, my, doc, my dad went to medical school in Germany, so he could not get into a medical school in, in uh, the United States. And a lot of medical schools did not, simply did not allow Negroes, they said. You would get a rejection letter saying, nope, we cannot allow Negroes in our school. Mm. That was 1959. And, and we, and that was 1959. That's within yeah. my lifetime. 1959. Yeah, that was 59. Well, and the yeah. reason was why? Because they were black. The logical law excuse was. That school. My, right. my grandparents in 1958 mm. here in Cleveland wanted to move to the suburbs. And because they were Jewish, they had to go yeah. door to door to yeah. get signatures of people allowing them to buy the land in the neighborhood oh, to geez. build their house. 
Yeah. And, and they couldn't join country clubs. Well, well, and right. yeah, and they couldn't country. get into yeah. medical school. When right. Not that long there, ago. I grew, yeah. I grew up, we moved to Marin County, and there was a place called the Marin Town and Country Club. And when I first moved there, Jews were not allowed in the Marin Town and Country Club. Eventually mm -hmm. they were, but um, not when we first moved there. Well, the Jewish community here built a country club called Hawthorne that was completely and totally above and beyond every luxury that the other country clubs had. Mm -hmm. And and when Just when swipe. others wanted to join, they were allowed, but because it was a Jewish country club, people didn't want to join because they didn't want to hang out with those Jews. But it's wow. it's still here. It's it's yeah. I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a country club guy, but I've 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 been invited there a couple of times and it's it's a super luxurious place that was designed because they couldn't join any other ones. Well, we we can talk about uh, about mm -hmm. uh, racism. We can also talk about sexism. Yeah. What's Indeed. that? Indeed. Well, at mm -hmm. some point they gave women the right to talk, vote, talk a little I slower there's women in the room. With. I thought it was a terrible Jeez. idea. <laughs> Alice, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to tone down the language. There's, there's what, women what do here. they know about politics? There's yeah. chicks here. <laughs> are, you, are you chick explaining? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> well, I always remember that that when I was teenager or something, whatever, and I said something. I can't even remember what. It was probably something black. And my mother, boy, she got me right in. <laughs> Don't ever talk like that. Do you know that those are terrible words? And blah, blah, blah. And she goes, oh, if I ever hear you doing that, you'll My do father told whatever. me that you never use that to describe a black person, yeah. that word. So when I went in, when I went <laughs> down in Houston, Texas, and that people, you know, the people like my program director came in and went, you know, there's an, Every time I heard that word, it just it put a chill up my spine because my father so ingrained it in me, you know. So uh, it was pretty a pretty unusual education I was getting in Texas. And now Charlie lives in Texas. Yeah, I it's used to joke. <laughs> I, I used to joke all the time that I always hired super qualified women to work in the office, so that when I take credit for the work, it's good work. <laughs> I, I got I got yelled at at the state on the stage once when I was doing a keynote speech and I said that and I was like I yeah. I'm sorry that, that you didn't understand what I was saying but you know it's it's it it's a in, joke. In the, yeah it was it, it it truly wasn't what I meant it was what I wanted people to understand there's a difference yeah well now so, we have, now we have a black uh, a black woman black a uh, black Asian woman. When when did she turn black again? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <a> couple years. <laughs> Just a couple of years ago, according to Trump. Yeah. 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 Uh, we have a black, you know, they're making a big deal out of it. But I mean, a few years ago, we had the first black president. Yeah. You know, yeah. what was what was that? What was that about? You know, that wasn't yeah. important. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's funny that important. Trump's trying to get a black job. Yeah, really. Yeah, it's, 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 Michelle Obama was brilliant. Michelle Obama was. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Was funny. About, you know. So I don't. I, I don't know what I would do if I were you, Mike. Uh, um, mm -hmm. it, that that's it, it's it's a wonderful I, book, but but I I don't know if, what I would do in terms of of um. Yeah. It's one of those things where where yeah, may, you know, maybe I maybe could... with some kind of an explanation attached to it. I I don't know. That's hard. I think I think what's great about uh, about uh, uh, Huckleberry Finn is the black, uh, the white kid and the black guy becoming mm -hmm. close friends and dependent right. upon each other. He's yeah, a heroic funny, figure. Totally it, funny comedy. It, it really is. Yeah. I mean, and to diminish any of that, okay, yeah. I think is is to diminish the what it was all about. This this story doesn't take place yesterday. This story takes place in the South back in the mid hundreds, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so, if you're going to accurately depict that time, it's not going to be oh Negro Jim, you know. I mean, or or whatever. I mean, come on. He was reflecting the times, and he was trying to show how this kid and this black guy became very close and very dependent on each other too. You know, 
And it was a lesson in racism more than anything else. And I thought a very, you know, you know so yeah. don't let it bother you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the thoughts, everybody. Thank you so much. I mean, I've got a beautiful, like, I, I literally bought this gorgeous Easton Press version yeah. of Huckleberry Finn in order to read to a young one. And my granddaughter is, 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 is the one, um, as opposed to the boys uh, who did read it independently. But I, 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 I can't wait to do this. And I just have to figure out do, a way to do it in the right way. Because, if, because if, you, you, where you, else a better place to learn about tolerance um, and, and, and racism and big concepts like this than a story it's so masterfully written and masterfully told. I just looked at the disclaimers at the beginning of it that Wayne wrote again, and I, I'm full of the all the goosebump moments of, of, of seeing this clever, amazing way that things are presented here. And it's like, yes, I have to tell it. I just got to figure out the way. Well, when, you get, to, when you get to the word, you just say to her, this word is not used these days, but this was a year a, a term that was used back then. Yeah. And, and, and Mike, and the story, you know, and if you, in a few years, Mike, when she's old enough and you need more advice, yeah. Let us know when you're going to read her the Fifty Shades of Grey. We'll give you that advice too. <laughs> <laughs> this was a terribly uh, written book. <laughs> oh yeah, you're welcome. Which I did yeah. read. <laughs> Not well written. But, wow. But also, but also, Jim yeah. has a very like exaggerated dialect, which I think yeah. almost feels a little offensive, and I think that's part of what like, people object to. But yeah, you know, a lot of blacks did talk that way back right, then. Right. I'm just saying why no, my, I mean, it was my a dialect. Well, of the, time. Yeah. the disclaimer at the beginning of the book has nothing to do with the N word. The disclaimer right. has to do with the fact that it's written in four different dialects. Yeah. Trying to keep it as 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 authentic sounding as possible, right. but worried that in well, doing so, I, I don't remember. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't Which remember. Which is so funny. Like that's so it, Mark Twain. Like, like, I don't like, remember because it was so long ago when I read it as a kid. But are the are does does uh, Huckleberry Finn talk in a dialect? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, not so. like not like what it's talking about in the disclaimer, but yeah. No, but I'm talking. But yes, he does. Like I mean, he talks. He talks as as folks at that time and place would have talked back then. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah. what's terrible about doing anything to Huckleberry Finn is that may be the most important piece of literature ever created in America. Yes. Okay. I mean, if you ask people what is the quintessential American novel, it would have to be Huckleberry Finn. Yeah. No question about it. Can I ask a question? Why Huckleberry Finn and not Tom Sawyer? Because I love them both equally as a kid. Yeah, I love Tom Sawyer is good. I, so. I often wondered about that too. There's there's a lot more sort of metaphor and 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 depth to Huckleberry Finn than there is to Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer is more of like a pop pulp fiction. Well, Tom pop Sawyer fiction. came first, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yes. And and eventually when they did Huckleberry Finn, I think the subtitle was uh, Tom Sawyer's friend or something mm -hmm. like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Tom Tom Sawyer was sort of a, a fun adventure, whereas Huckleberry Finn had deep social meaning beyond. Exactly. Yeah. Also, I think it was a matter that uh, Twain had kind of matured as a writer by that, yeah. and, and felt he had to he had to touch a topic like that. Similar, yeah. if you read uh, Puddinghead Wilson, which is another Twain book, where completely before its time where he's a detective who figures out fingerprints and this, these kinds of things in Connecticut Yankee King Arthur's Court. There are also, you know, brilliant insight way before the time that those books would have made sense. Um, there is an ex extremely, extremely good. And then at the end of his life, read Letters to the Earth, which is probably one of the most sarcastic atheist writing. Well, let history. me talk about a very racist movie. A very racist movie, and I don't know if you feel it's racist or not, or whether we should do anything about it. Uh, but that's gone with the wind. You know, I mean, a lot of very racist concepts in that in that storyline. Uh, should should we change that? I mean, no, it's got no. points where TCM, when they run it, they do a disclaimer ahead of time. Really? But well, right. this film was made in it, and we have to take the film as it was uh, taken when it first came out. And 
in its context and so on and so forth. They make a big excuse about it and how a lot of the references are are bad and wrong and and so forth. I can tell I can tell you one thing, which is that um, my daughter in law was raised in Jackson, Mississippi, and got out as soon as she could. Um, my memory, of course, she said uh, in a different generation from me, but uh, my my memory of Gone with the Wind, I, I I read it first before I saw the movie, and I just loved it because it was a great story. She despises it, despises it because because of uh, um of all the negative associations mm-hmm. to to Southern bigotry. And we have very, very different reactions to that movie. Um, to her, it's 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 a, a summation of, of all the things that, that are wrong about uh, the Deep South. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad they have those disclaimers at the front of the movie, because I almost watched a movie last week. They were going to smoke in the movie, but they told me. You know, they've uh, actually taken movies now and remove the cigarettes yeah. digitally. Really? Yeah. Think, I'm so glad. Yeah. Those cigarettes. <laughs> it's 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 just terrifying. But, but you know, the good thing they it, because when they it's take the cigarettes out, you can actually see the bullets hit the people, and then it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I used to go to my doctor's office, and my doctor was smoking. All doctors smoke, and they yeah. smoked in the okay. hospital but, when they went. But to you know, nine places. out of ten of them recommended Luckies. You realize? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was why they had all those post-surgery infections because they were using the bodies as ashtrays while they were operating on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! That tenth doctor did Marlboros too. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, but I mean, uh, 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 the question is, do you go back and do you change these things? And the answer is, I don't think so. No, you shouldn't. They, they are contextual <laughs> of the times. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, and 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 why why change them? Let them live in the time they were made. Who who was it in the Bush administration that covered up statue crotches with? I can't remember who it was. Was it was it the Justice Department? There was a statue of of a woman who was naked, who was naked, and they'd always give speeches in front of it. And finally, it was Nixon or somebody who had it covered up. (laughs) You know, I want to say Ashfield or Ashman or something like that. Ashcroft, Ashcroft, Ashcroft. That's who it was. Yeah, right. I'm I'm glad they did that too. I was so embarrassed. I think they should have just put it, covered it with a cigarette. Look, (laughs) the fact is that we should not deny our past because even though we made we we made big mistakes, those mistakes should be understood as as what we were doing back then. I mean, when I fun exercise for writing for what we've talked about here, but let's flip it for a second. Nobody today would ever understand that Three's company was a controversial show back in the day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, like, look at the shows that were actually controversial and to why. Yeah. A man living with two women, pretending to be gay, living together out of wedlock, like even when Three's a Crowd happened, I think Jack and, and, and Vicky well, he lived, lived together. Right. Yeah. Tell that you know, to the producers like, of Bosom Buddies. He pretended to be gay, <laughs> if I remember correctly, in order yeah. to get the apartment. Yeah. 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 Be a room because it was so outlandish that that would be the case. Right. Um, you know, otherwise, that, that that those three like that was a controversial show. The idea of, of other shows mm-hmm. where living before marriage uh, were, were controversial back in the day that's also not discussed and not a bad idea to throw it out there with disclaimers on that side of it as well. Yeah, right. right. What, about, what about the married couples with separate beds? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Tom H- Tom Hanks won't. I mean, you can't see bosom buddies anywhere. <laughs> too too true. Too. Guys. Right. They don't. They don't run bosom buddies. No, 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 no. Be they were cross dressers. Yeah. How dare you? That was to protect the public from their evil thoughts. <laughs> and and fake breasts. Well, it's amazing <laughs> what we do in the name of of censorship. Yeah, yeah. but we still can watch the Flying Nun. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I love about this? We don't talk about politics on this show. No, no, no. We tackle lighthearted stuff like, yeah. <laughs> 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 like <laughs> and all that. 
<laughs> like racism. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, it's very funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, I mean, uh, it, it, it's just amazing how far we have come. But still, we're going to look back on this time and go, can you believe back then they did thus and thus? Sure. Yeah. You know, I I took Mike's recommendation and I went and saw Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah. Which was really funny. It was really funny. I'm not a superhero kind of person, but it was very funny. Lots of good one-liners. But what struck me was all the sex jokes and all the cursing. And I thought, like, wow, we've really come a long way, you know, talking about like what's not allowed and stuff, but like it was almost relentless. Yeah, but you know, I got to tell you, Marjorie is bothered by something. Is bothered by something in films, especially where sex is concerned. What? Not enough penis. (laughs) (laughs) Are we going, when there's a- You want to show tits, show penis. Well, no, tits are not the equivalent of penis, okay? So, yeah. All right? Now, if they showed vagina, then we're talking about, you know, but occasionally there will be a penis and I will be watching it on some show I'm watching. And then I will say to her, okay, I found some penis for you. And then we'll go, she'll go watch it, you know. Officer and a gentleman. I remember that. <laughs> what? Richard Gere and the officer and a gentleman. Really? Yeah. yeah. He had to prove he was a gentleman. <laughs> yeah, he was a gentleman, exactly. The funniest to me in modern in modern history when it comes to that is forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yes, yeah, uh, that that was absolutely hilarious. I'm uh, trying to remember what was what what did you find? Uh, well, in- she broke up with them. He was naked, and she broke up with them, and he dropped he dropped his towel, and suddenly, yeah. And then at the end of the movie, even a callback to that, and he does it again. Um. Anyway, it's a it's a very very funny movie. You ever watch Forgetting Sarah Marshall? It's worth watching. Russell mm-hmm. Brand is amazing, and uh, guess who's getting Jason ready to leave? Who guess who's get, leaving? You want to get turned well, off? Yeah, we got too controversial. Hey, yeah, no, <laughs> it's too, much, too, work, too, much, too much, too much, too much, too much penis talk. She's been working hard and listening to the show at the same time. I know that. Uh, Mandy, have a good class to teach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you going off to the class now? She's on mute. Oh, she's on mute. Hold on. I had you muted because I'm making so much noise. I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, what I want to say, are you off to class now? Yeah. Yeah? How's it going? How's that teaching of the class going? Good. I just don't trust. I don't trust traffic in this town. So anywhere. I have to leave a good bit. It doesn't start till 545. But it takes you that much. Sometimes that long to get across. Well, it's just, like I said, I, I can end up being there fine but i just don't trust it because you never know oh by the way uh good luck you're going to have a lot of politicians dropping by your state uh, in the next couple of months i know yeah yeah and i wanted to tell you guys a disturbing story but now it's really too late but i can tell you all next week oh okay all right (laughs) well we'll we'll wait i mean it's not even really worth probably (laughs) talking about honestly now to think about it is depressing Oh, oh, it was about, I guess it had to do with Trump in your town, right? No, it. I was leaving for camping on Friday, mm-hmm. and we were, like, like packing up the car. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, we, lost her. we lost her. Damn it. Well, the call us next week, Mandy. It's a flattering shot. I blame, I blame hey, it. He went outside and it was wait, shooting. Wait. The cop shot this kid dead, like, about oh 75 yards down from the house. Freaked oh, me okay. out, man. Yes. Oh, okay. oh, boy. It turns out it was a kid. He was 17, and he had mm-hmm. called the cop saying that he was suicidal. Mm-hmm. So they killed him. Yeah. And so they killed him. Right. Well, he came at him with a knife. Oh, that's yeah. He, so shoot him in the leg. There is such a that's thing. That's what you know? I said. Yeah. I was yeah. so Taser. upset about it. Right. Yeah. I was so upset. Oh. And I just uh, oh. made me so angry and sad. Wow. But I oh. don't know. Well, you- and I have this crazy neighbor that's, <laughs> she's like 90, 85. 
I went out there, we were there to see what happened and we saw it and she was on her porch and she said, they killed it. She was being so flippant about it. Oh, you know? And I just thought, I mean, it traumatized me, really. I don't, boy. Yeah. Of course it would but traumatize he, me, he too. Like, he, like, came at, like, he said he was suicidal and depressed, so they had mental behavior counselor on the phone with him. And by the time the cops got there, they were still trying to counsel him, but they had this knife, and he lunged at him, and they told him to drop it. And he still kept charging them. Mm -hmm. But I, I said the same thing. I, I don't understand why they couldn't just disable him. Yeah, just shoot right. him in the leg. Yeah. Right. Taser, right. Taser the kid. Right, right. Let him but, up. But my friend Henry, he's an ex-policeman, and he was trying to explain to me that's not how it works. Yeah. Well, of course, it's not how it works, but that's how it should be. <laughs> that's yeah. how it should be, exactly. But he had this explanation for it, and I trust the fact that, you know, he's not, he didn't like it either, but he just said that's the <clears throat> way they're trained. That's the way they're trained. Well, then they should be trained another way, obviously. Right. I think obviously. we're going to find out he was watching movies with cigarettes in them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. And, and they were saying zippity doo -dah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! But anyway, that, that was crazy. I just thought that yeah. was well. Thank you for telling us that story. That's me. I'm sorry. I'm, I know it was probably a depressing story, but um, yeah. But I just, I mean, especially when you know people will talk about Atlanta being dangerous or like this city being dangerous. I'm like, obviously, it can happen anywhere, like yeah, wherever. You're at. That's right. And, and I think that's why it kind of freaked me out too, because. Henry had been outside, like just packing the car up. And, you know, so when he had just walked back inside, and I was just in the kitchen and we were talking outside and pow, 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 pow. And I was like, who's shooting off firecrackers? And he was like, oh. uh, I'm going to go investigate this. Oh, wow. So he went outside and he came back. And he said, that wasn't firecrackers. He oh. said, you're about, you're about to get hit with a bunch of uh, police cars and media. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Because we were already planning on leaving. And yeah. they had shut the road down, and people were like turning around in my driveway, and so oh. we just left. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Well, but, yeah, it was pretty. Nice. That's another problem we got to solve. You know, yep. that's yeah. one problem we haven't solved. And I think that if we want to talk about something that twenty years from now is going to look old fashioned, it's going to be that. Yeah. You know, hopefully, right. <laughs> Bless Trump, Jemima. President, in which case it'll be that? the cause celeb. Yeah. You might want to you might want to stay in uh, in Paris if that happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah well, you'll be there for the election then. We'll be there for the election. Oh yeah, they are having an election, yeah. aren't they? No, I'm talking about our elections. We are. We are. Our elections. We yeah, are. we're not going to be here for our elections, Mark. Yes, we are. We're leaving after on the seventh. Uh, we're leaving on the seventh. Okay, then by then we should know whether we should come back or not. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. But uh, anyway, ah, uh, boy, what I missed the first part. So you're going to Paris when? The seventh. The seventh. The seventh. Why, man, do you plan on robbing their apartment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when is it again you're leaving? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get Kenzie to sneak down to Harlem and break it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you know, it's good. We have about a minute and a half left here. Can I say something real quick? Sure. The meeting that I was a part of just before this one, the reason I was late, mm -hmm. uh, man, and we said it, the, the, the gentleman who said it, he used to work for Letterman back in the day, and now he's helping us. We're building, we're, we're, we're pitching a documentary on Jack Rollins. And in that uh, pitch, in that meeting, um, we had this moment that I just wanted to share with you, Alex, and, and the group too, but God damn, do we ever wish Shecky was still around? Because Shecky, knowing of the things we were talking about and we want to get footage from old New York and all this sort of yeah. stuff. And it's okay, just okay. Before we go any further, I want to show you how good that documentary is going to come off. How many here know who Jack Rawls is? No one does. No one does. <laughs> no. Oh, Marjorie does. Okay, I that's do. cool. 
Yeah. But regardless, regardless, it's going to be a great, great, great story if it gets made. And and uh, we were just saying, ah, oh, we wish Rick was here. Not only to see that it's going to get made, but also to be a part of it and, and, and whatnot. Anyways, I miss my friend Rick. I just yeah. want to throw his name out there. They're yeah, well, getting I'm ready missing. to throw down his house. They're really? Ready to do really? What? They're getting ready to throw Shecky's house down. There really? Is really? Yeah. Really? yeah. Oh yeah. boy! How do you know? How do you know that? Uh, I run, I drove by. They have the construction fence up. So that means they're gonna wow, throw it down. Wow! Wow! You know, uh, he said to me, "The minute I die, yeah, the minute I move out of this house and sell it, the person who buys it's gonna tear it down and turn it into a McMansion." Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it will be. It's a lovely little, you know, nineteen fifties style house. Yeah. And it means so much to me because I spent many a night overnight there. Um, yeah. mm. And I, I just knew they'd wind up tearing it down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and they probably, it's a big enough lot, they're probably going to sell off half the lot. Mm. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Yeah. 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 Bingo. Anyway, mm -hmm. hey, thank you, uh, 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 Charlie, for being here today. We always enjoy you. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, oh, resistance is futile. Yeah, okay. It's not futile. <laughs> it's voltage divided by current. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Paula, always great having you here. Charlene Solis, a pleasure. Len, really nice. Uh, we lost... Uh, 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 Andrew Deutsch. Andrew oh, yeah. Deutsch. Thank you to Andrew Deutsch. Thank you to Marjorie. Thank you to Francine Witt. We always enjoy your participation. Jeff, good having you here. Mandy, thanks for the delightful story about a kid being shot by the cops. Um, and of course, Mike. Those are my friends. I was traumatized. I know. Mike, thank you so much. I appreciate your participation. And now it is time for Edward Berger to sign us off by saying. That's all, folks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And bye-bye. See you next week. Thank Bye. you, Alan. Bye, guys.